This class definition begins by declaring a private instance variable of type int named data. As a private instance variable, it is accessible by any method or constructor that is defined within the class, but it is not accessible to methods from outside the class. The constructor for the class is shown in its entirety on the upper right of your screen. The constructor begin, begins by displaying the problem number and the student's name on the command line screen. The constructor receives an incoming parameter of type int named data. The last statement in the constructor saves that incoming value in the instance variable whose name is data. That makes the random value or the incoming value available to methods that are defined within the class. And as you will recall from an earlier discussion, that incoming value is a random value that was generated in the main method. We learned earlier that this class must provide a concrete definition of the method named get modified data because that method is declared in the interface named prob05x which is implemented by this class. With the exception of some very subtle differences that are beyond the scope of this course, the concrete definitions of interface methods that are defined in implementing classes must match the signature of the method as it is declared in the interface. The method named get modified data is shown in its entirety on the upper right of your screen. When this method is called, it subtracts a value of 1 from the value that is stored in the instance variable named data and returns that modified value. We also learned earlier that this class must provide a concrete definition of the method named getData, which is also declared in the interface named prob05x. The method named getData is shown in its entirety on the upper right of your screen. This method returns a copy of the value that is stored in the private instance variable named data. When the code in the main method instantiates an object of this class, it passes a random value as a parameter to the constructor. That constructor, now showing on the upper right of your screen, stores that random value in the instance variable named data. When the method name get modified data is called, it returns a value that is one less than the original random value stored in the instance variable named data. When the getData method is called, it returns a copy of the original random value. The class name prob05myclassA extends the class named object by default. Therefore, it inherits a method named toString, 
from the class named object. The inherited behavior of the two-string method is very specific, but it isn't very useful. So here is a question for you. What is the default behavior of the two-string method as defined in the object class? The default behavior of the two-string method is to return a reference to a string object that contains the name of the class from which the object was instantiated, followed by an at symbol, which I'm highlighting now, followed by six hexadecimal digits. The code on the bottom right of your screen overrides the inherited two-string method. The overridden version provides a different behavior when the method is executed in conjunction with an object of the class name prob05 my class a the new behavior is to construct and return a string version of the value obtained by adding 5 to the value stored in the instance variable name data and concat concatenating that value with an empty string. In case you are unfamiliar with this technique, an easy way to convert a numeric value to a string value in Java is simply to use the concatenation operator and concatenate that numeric value with an empty string as defined by a pair of quotation marks. Therefore, the overridden two-string method returns a value as a string or returns a string that represents a value that is five greater than the original random value. The code fragment on the bottom right of your screen also signals the end of the class definition for the class named Prob05 My Class A. Here is a question for you How do you create a multi dimensional array in Java? The answer is that you create a multi-dimensional array in Java by creating a tree structure of one-dimensional array objects. Each node in the tree is an array object whose elements contain references to other array objects. Each leaf in the tree is a one-dimensional array object whose elements contain either primitive values or references to ordinary objects. Referring back to the main method on the right of your screen, we see that the driver class also instantiates an object of the class named prob05 my class b. It passes the same random value to the constructor for that class as was passed to the constructor for the class named prob05 my class a earlier. The reference to the new object is stored in the second element of the array object 
of type object referred to by the reference variable named var1. Just in case I forgot to mention it earlier, the reference to the object of the class named prob05 my class A is stored in the first element of that same array object. The beginning of the definition of the class name prob05 my class B is now showing on the right of your screen. As you can see, this class also implements the interface named prob05x. This requires that this class also provide concrete definitions for the two methods that are declared in that interface. As with the previous class, this class also uh, saves the incoming random value in an instance variable named data. It is very important for you to understand that this variable named data is completely unrelated to the private instance var variable named data that is declared in the class definition for the class name prob05 my class A. Even though they are the same type and they have the same name, they are the two instance variables named data are defined in different classes and are completely independent of one another. When objects are instantiated from the two different classes, the variables named data will belong to different objects and objects do not share instance variables. Even though the objects that were instantiated from these two classes in the main method were instantiated from different classes, they are related to one another in the sense that they have two ancestors in common. Both of the classes extend the class named object by default. Therefore, the object class is one of their common ancestors. Both classes also explicitly implement the interface named prob05x. Therefore, that interface is their second common ancestor. That means that either object can be treated as either type object or type prob05x in addition to being treated as a type which is the name of the class from which they were instantiated.